our amazing brain. Lesson four. So yesterday we wrote down all the things that we're not good at. Yeah, pretty sad. But we're going to look at it in a different way. Can you give me examples of all the things that you're good at? Maybe it's you make people smile, okay? Maybe you're just a happy-go-lucky person and you're really good at making other people smile and feel good about themselves. Maybe you're a good artist. Maybe you're good at sports. Maybe it's something like that has to do with school, like writing or reading or listening, or maybe you're a really good friend, or it's a hobby that you do on a regular basis and you're good at it. So how does yesterday's lesson about what is tricky for you go with today's lesson of what you're good at. Well, if you're having trouble with something, okay, let's go back to negative yesterday, okay? I am not good at um, saying no. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm not good at saying no. I can admit it. I will take on more things and then be like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm just not good at saying no. Okay. I am very good at saying no to my children. So don't get those two things mixed up. They're completely different. Okay. So I'm not good at saying no. That can sometimes make me feel bad. Okay. And when you're, when you're in that tricky situation or I don't know how to do a math problem or I can't figure something out, I'm like, oh, nothing's going right. Oh, I'm just not good at this. If you get that feeling, which we all do, encourage yourself or tell somebody else to encourage you and start thinking about what you're good at. I am sure your list today is going to be much bigger than the list you made yesterday. Sometimes we just take for granted and we're like, nah, yeah, it's okay. But no, you're really good at it. So if you're in a pinch where you're just like, oh my gosh, I just fell off the bike again. You're like, okay, well, I got on it really well. So sometimes it's changing the way we think. Instead of focusing on the negative, we start thinking on the positive. So we can train our mind. Okay, so training our mind can help us with things in our lives that feel tricky, but it can also make us feel happier. So if you notice things, some good things in life that aren't necessarily noticed, okay? You fell off your bicycle for the 10th time, but you got on really well and each time you went just a little bit further, that's positive. Um, let's see. The math problem is really hard, but now we can go just a little bit further and it's almost done. Might not be right, but it's almost there. Might not be really good at speaking in front of people, but you're an excellent person to talk to. So think of something positive, even when something negative is going on. And it's going to help train your brain to always look at the positive side. Because when we're thinking positive thoughts, our bodies are producing chemical that, oh, it's just like our breathing exercise. It makes us feel good. But always being negative can make you feel really tired and kind of grouchy and miserable all the time. So let's train our brains to think positive. Think about the good things in life, even when something isn't going well.
So let's learn to bring our stress down and let's get in some meditation, bringing it down. exercise will teach you how to gain control of your stressful energy when it gets too high to handle. Close your eyes, listen, and follow along. Or keep your eyes open and follow along that way. It's up to you. Sit tall. You can be on the ground with your legs crossed or in your chair with your feet flat on the floor. Now imagine that you can look up and see the sky. And up in the sky, way up in the sky, is a balloon. If you'd like, you can choose a color for your balloon. Keep the picture of the balloon in your mind. The balloon's string reaches all the way down to your hands. Hold on to the string. Imagine that you can feel the pull of that big balloon. Imagine that the wind pushes it from side to side. Or imagine that the wind actually tries to pull the balloon higher into the sky. Maybe you can feel the gentle tugging of the string in your hands. Now try to bring your balloon down. Be careful to go slowly. You don't want the fragile string to break from pulling too hard or too quickly. Take your time. Imagine that you can gently pull the string, hand over hand. The string collects in a pile at your feet. Hand over hand, pull after gentle pull. The balloon appears to come closer. It might even become easier to bring it down in your mind as it gets closer to you. Keep bringing it down, closer and closer. Some other strings might be longer or shorter than yours, and that's okay. Just bring it down at your speed. Focus on your balloon. Keep bringing it down. Your colorful balloon may now be within your reach. Pretend that you do not need to use the string anymore. You can actually hold the balloon between your hands. Notice if you can feel the balloon in your hands. Be gentle. Imagine that with your next out breath, you can open your hands and release your balloon. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> 